I'm pleased to present today the Secretary General and Registrar of the International College of Dentists, Dr. Richard Schaefer, uh, to get a chance to spend a little bit of time with us today and talk about the college. I'm delighted that uh, you've invited me, Dick, to, uh, to come and, and try to uh, make people more knowledgeable about our college and section, and I welcome that opportunity. I think before we begin about talking about the college, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the kind of background and, and expertise that you bring to, to this position. May I first say that I'm honored to, to serve the college as its Secretary General and the USA section as its Registrar. Um, my background is one of general clinical dentistry and, and a unique opportunity to have served as Chief of the Navy Dental Corps for approximately five years. I think this has given me a background of experience and, uh, and staff positions which uh, should help the operation of the central office. Uh, I, I can say to you right up front in a, in a vehicle such as this that uh, I am giving my full energies to the enhancement of the college and the section. Dick, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about how the college got started and a little bit of its history. Dick, I think it is important for people in the organization to understand the history, and uh, I'd be delighted to do that. Uh, the original idea for the International College of Dentists uh, was born at a dinner party in Tokyo in November of 1920. Uh, a group of dentists was gathered uh, to bid farewell to Dr. Louis Odafi, who uh, was returning to the United States after 23 years in the Orient and the Philippines. And there were many people urging him at that particular point in time to, uh, uh, to create an organization to satisfy uh, objectives of worldwide dentistry. And uh, he agreed to do that at the urging of primarily uh, Dr. Amura of, uh, Akamura of uh, Japan. Officially, the college began in uh, December of 1927, uh, began to grow, and in July of 1928 was incorporated uh, in Washington, D.C. under its laws of incorporation. Uh, the first convocation of the college was held in 1930 during the meeting of the American Dental Association in Dental, uh, Denver, Colorado. The USA section, however, began operation in February of 1934 and was incorporated in 1940. Although uh, planned in the charter were other such sections uh, in the world, World War II interrupted and of course uh, interrupted many things throughout the world at that time and uh, virtually everything stopped. Uh, following World War II, uh, the reorganization of the college occurred in 1947 and most of the college business affairs were conducted by the USA section. In Chicago in 1938, uh, the college adapted the resolution stating, and I think this is really an important statement because it is, it is occurring today with the selection of the fellows that we have into the college. And may I quote that uh, the aim and purpose of the International College of Dentists is to recognize conspicuous and meritorious service to the profession of dentistry. All worthy qualified recipients of fellowship in the ICD shall be considered regardless of their previous future affiliations with other honorary organizations. Uh, this important resolution is still operative uh, at this point. Dr. Elmer Best uh, served as both the Secretary General of the College then and Registrar of the USA Section uh, since their inception and died in 1954. Uh, in November of 1954, Dr. H. O. Westerdahl, who was Dr. Best's deputy registrar, was named to succeed him. And under Dr. Westerdahl's guidance, uh, representatives of the European nations met uh, in around 1956 to make plans for the organization of the European section. During Dr. Westerdahl's tenure as Secretary General and USA Registrar, the central office was located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, in February of 1974, after 20 wonderful years of outstanding service to the International College, Dr. Westerdahl retired. And he was succeeded by Dr. Franklin M. Kenward of Miami, Florida, who then moved the central office to Miami. 
After serving 14 dedicated years, uh, Frank Kenwood retired and a search co committee selected myself as his replacement. Uh, the central office now has been moved from Miami to Rockville, Maryland. And I think interestingly enough, it's about 20 miles from where we were first incorporated 40 years ago. The official publication of the college uh, is an annual magazine which has been edited by Dr. William Hawkins since 1977 and it's called The Globe and now includes uh, scientific articles as well as news of college activities. Important dates uh, I might mention of the formation of autonomous sections uh, include Canada in 1948 and Japan in 1958, Australia 1964, India in 1964, the Philippines in 1966, Mexico in 1980, South America in 81, and Korea in 1985. I think it's important to mention this to give the flavor of the International College. That's a quick synopsis of our history and where we are now. And uh, uh, I think it's important for people to understand uh, our background because it's a good one. Maybe you could spend a few minutes and explain organizationally, how does the USA section fit into the college? Yes, the worldwide organization of the International College is broken down into 12 autonomous sections. And by that I mean these are separate, uh, uniquely organized, geographically uh, organized sections that govern themselves. However, they do have to follow the rules of the college's constitution and bylaws. There is one of those sections, it's called the International Section, and that we administrate from the central office. And it's composed of countries that having uh, less membership than would be required to formulate a autonomous section. The United States of America section is one of those autonomous sections and is the largest. Dick, could you go into a little bit more detail about how the USA section is organized? Yes. Um, as I had mentioned, uh, there are uh, 12 uh, autonomous sections in the college uh, worldwide. The USA section is one of those, has its own bylaws, has its own kind of, uh, uh, rules uh, that it uh, must follow, none of which, are, of course, uh, have any problems with the Constitution bylaws of the college. Now, within the United States, the organization is broken up into 16 districts, exactly as the American Dental Association districts uh, are delineated. Uh, we have a Board of Regents, which is the ruling body of the USA section, and it would be similar to the trustees of the American Dental Association, one regent from each district. Within the states, then, there is a deputy regent representing that state uh, or states. Now, between the regent and the deputy regent is a, a number two in command in the chain of command, so to speak, is a vice regent. And he normally is not from the state, uh, same state as the, as the regent. Uh, then within the states following uh, the direction of the deputy regent are consulars and editors. And they are really the backbone Mm -hmm. of what brings members into the organization and those that make the news for the, for the uh, annual publication, the key, and those that uh, uh, create these wonderful gatherings at various dental meetings of the International College. These are all done by the local people, the people in the trenches that do the work. I think I know there's a lot of uh, folks who uh, would be honored to be selected as members in the college. Uh, what is that about? Well, as you know, uh, the International College is not an organization that you just walk up and join. You're invited to join and you have to satisfy certain criteria. Uh, for example, uh, you must be a member in the United States of the American Dental Association. You must have been in practice a minimum of five years. You must be over 30 years of age. You must have demonstrated conspicuous and dedicated achievement and working not only in dentistry, in research, in teaching, 
in clin clinical work, but in the community. And, and it's, it's uh, not easy to satisfy the requirements of the college. And so for somebody to say, I'd like to join, that just doesn't happen. Uh, people uh, that are members within the states then can recommend uh, to a screening process. The screening process recommends to the state deputy regent. He then recommends to the regent and, and no place in this process may uh, a negative vote occur. So when they have passed our selectively screened process, uh, we're very pleased that the person, uh, whether it be uh, um, one of our young ladies or our young gentlemen or uh, when more advanced age uh, to membership, we're, we're delighted and we know they're qualified. I wonder if you could go on now and, and, and talk a little bit about what the college does. Well, uh, that's an interesting question because probably as I have traveled around since I have been uh, in this wonderful position is two questions come up. One is, what does the college do? My wife wants to know. And second is, why should I join the college? Why should I be a member of the International College? Well, I think those are both good questions and I, and I have tried since I have been uh, the Registrar and Secretary General to uh, ensure that our membership is aware of the answers to those college because of those questions because I, I think that uh, it's very important for them to understand the answers to those questions. First, let's, uh, let's go, what does the college do? The United States of America section has a, many, many very worthwhile projects that the section either financially supports or they themselves do. And may I just list a few of those for you because I think the, the people should understand that. Uh, I have tried, incidentally, in the new a newsletter we have started, the keynotes, to spotlight one of those projects each uh, issue. And if uh, we have already spotlighted several and we'll continue to do that until we've completed our projects. That will take several years. The projects that we have financially supported are things like the career options in dentistry for junior and senior dental students from our college, which is held uh, in connection with the Council of Faculties of the American Association of Dental Schools. We financially support that, and I had the fortune of attending uh, the one that was uh, put on in Chicago last year of three to 400 people attending. It was a very worthwhile project. One of the one of the projects which uh, comes back to the benefit the member most of all is the continuing education course program. We have put on seven of those, eighth will be this year and each year, a tuition free program uh, to the fellow. Uh, we have uh, put some on in some very nice places, including uh, Puerto Rico and Boston and Steamboat Springs and Will Williamsburg and St. Louis, and we're going to have one in, in Nashville and Mexico City. Uh, these are tuition-free continuing education programs for the fellow, and, and of course his family is invited, and uh, this is a wonderful project. Uh, it's supported primarily by the foundation of the United States of America section. Uh, which I'm delighted to say close to 70% of our membership has donated to. Uh, I think that's superb. I think that shows you the caliber of people that we have in the college. Another very worthwhile project uh, that is being carried on, of course, is the student awards. For 20 years, that's been given to the senior student who has shown the most improvement uh, in his or her uh, years of dental study. Last year we gave 57 of those awards throughout the country. A worthwhile program, financially supported, and a very beautiful memento uh, to show the achievement of a dental student in our dental schools. I might say that this year, coming into fellowship, is a gentleman that received that award as a senior in dental school, and I think that just shows you how long that worthwhile project has been going on. We have several very worthwhile projects that we financially support in the dental journalism field. Uh, many years ago, they saw that there was a need to recognize uh, excellence in dental journalism. And 15 awards are presently given yearly 
uh, in that area. Also in dental journalism, uh, many people don't recognize that we, in connection with the American Dental Association, financially support a symposium on dental journalism held in Chicago and taught by the faculty of Northwestern University, a super program to enhance uh, the dental journalism uh, endeavors in dentistry. Uh, other programs are just magnificent, and I think that one of the pro projects which is financially supported uh, by the USA section is the videotape series uh, on leaders in dentistry. That project was the only program that was able to videotape, for example, Dr. Harold Hillenbrand uh, before he passed away. The only organization that saw a need to do that and has made a record. At this point, I believe it's 18 leaders in dentistry have been done on videotape, uh, a superb uh, project of the USA section. So that's just a few, Dick, of the many projects which are supported uh, either financially or with our own labor uh, for the USA College. That is the answer to what does the USA section do. Yeah. Dick, we spent a few minutes talking about the, the history and, and background of the college. I wonder if you could take a little bit of time now and from your perspective, talk about where the college is going. Predicting the future, Dick, is not probably one of my great uh, uh, advantages at this point in time, but I, I do feel that uh, as, as I look at the college as I see it now, I see a very strong group of officers. At the international level, I see a very strong international council which makes decisions for the college. At the USA level, I see a, a, a very, very strong board of regents uh, and officers. I see a, a group of hard-charging uh, deputy regents and some really, some really highly enthusiastic vice regents in between there and, and editors and counselors. Uh, so if you look at the organizational aspect of the people in place now, I think it's very bright. Internationally, this is a time when there's some some really slick stuff going on. It's, it's kind of neat to be able to look at Eastern Europe right now. Uh, we've never had this opportunity before, and I'm supporting the European section to bring the Eastern uh, Bloc countries uh, of Eastern Europe. Not only we hope their democracy is certainly strong, but we want their, our colleagues in those countries to be able to uh, join with us, and that I think is a future step. Uh, one of the things in the future that we must continue to do is to reevaluate. Uh, our objectives and our projects to ensure that they are enhancing dentistry and organization of dentistry. I think we must continue to, uh, to support even stronger our national dental organizations in various countries and the United States at the American Dental Association. Uh, I would be excited if I were a young person coming into dentistry right now. I think the future of dentistry is, uh, is very, very bright. Uh, and I think the International College is uh, an organization in place to ensure that that occurs. And so I feel very good about the future and I hope our membership will work with us in the central office to make that happen.